Lena, tell me, how did you get into fashion illustration? Have you always drawn? How did how did it sort of become a thing that you love uh, to do? Yeah, so uh, it started from just fashion, and I was drawing like uh, traditional drawings. Uh, bones anatomy drawing from Ukraine they teach us this stuff like very academical and then when I came here like I found out about this course that it exists and um, it just like came naturally like with my portfolio um, the the girl came and she said like why don't you try to go to fashion illustration course not fashion design or fashion photography yeah. because you like to draw and you like fashion so just uh, try to combine this stuff so it's like so lucky it came like so natural came kind of yeah organically yeah. and a lot of people talk about how there's kind of been a bit of a resurgence in fashion illustration. Would you say that's the case? Um, that there's a kind of renewed interest in, in it as a, as a medium? Mm, I guess it is true, yeah, because people forgot that it exists. Because photography like kind of came by bomb and mm. everybody just started uh, taking pictures. And it's, uh, it's all right, but we have to remember that there is kind of a painting area yeah. as well, art, yeah. And it's cool to combine uh, and show that uh, like fashion can be represented by painting, you know, yeah. because um, I guess artists just see a little bit different as a photography does. So it's quite interesting to see how people use mediums, different Differently, mediums. Yeah. Yeah, and, stuff. and tell me about your specific style, because you have a really distinctive style. Like, you know, I could immediately see it, really? see your work and know that it was yours. I think definitely. <laughs> and is that something, so tell me firstly how that style developed and is it something that you've kind of always done, but also like, how do you go about sort of making a picture? Is there, a, do you start in a specific way? Does it come from the color or the form? Just tell me a bit about it. Um, so like, I guess three years ago, I was drawing just a normal pencil drawings, so like a face or a body. So nothing really specific and nothing really emotional or whatever. Mm. So then I tried at the live drawing, it kind of like came out. Uh, in college in a fashion illustration course. Um, just took a paper, another paper, black, and uh, new mediums. So um, kind of like came up this uh, expressive drawing um, uh, technique and I started to develop that. And uh, just from different uh, tutors' advices, like mm. Sue, Dre, and uh, Daniela, I love them. Like yeah. it's just perfect devices for me because I would never develop my style without my tutors, basically, yeah. 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 I start with, um, I just look at the body, like uh, colors first, and then uh, the outfit definitely yeah. kind of inspire me what kind of paper to use, because if it's like very colorful, I can uh, go with a white paper, mm -hmm. but if it's like more kind of uh, deep colors, they better stand out on the great paper, the great paper. I used to use. Yeah, yeah, I really love to use the great paper as well. Yeah. And do you try and, I've noticed you do work fast, do you try to yeah. sort of set yourself a time limit or is it just quite natural that you're... Oh, yeah, it just comes out like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I should do like <laughs> slow more, down. yeah, slow down, slow down. But, but no, it just comes out like that. Um, and uh, it takes a lot of energy, I found out, like, yeah. when you do, like, very energetic and uh, emotional after, like, one, two illustrations, I'm, like, tired, I need a break. Yeah. Yeah, but here is, like, seven hours in yeah. a row. <laughs> Exhausted. Exhausted, <laughs> but it's just so productive. And yeah. I really love this. Yeah. yeah. And tell me, last question, is there sort of specific fashion that is really great to draw? You talk a lot about colour, and um, so yeah. for you, is it is it about kind of surface and embellishment and the, and the tones of the outfit? Are there particular designers that you sort of love drawing? Oh, I love Gucci now. Yeah. It's my favourite, like, yeah. you can... There's so much. So much colour, yeah. so much pattern, print, that you can, like, go into detailed. And um, Carrot Poo is my favorite from London. Yeah. Uh, like anything colorful or structured, Structures. you know, you can like walk around, work around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. So Bex, tell me a little bit about your specific style of illustration because I've noticed um, from sort of following your work since you started illustrating for Show Studio, you've changed your style quite a lot. You kind of yeah. often flip between doing things that are very, very intricate, very laboured, and then things that are much more kind of um, abstract. So tell me a little bit about sort of how your styles develop. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I can. I think it depends on what I'm doing. So normally it's kind of, I mean, the black works that I do with the white pencil and stuff is more kind of what I've been doing today yeah. um, and that's kind of I guess time restrictions as well so I find that my monoprints are kind of like take 
like, although they look more spontaneous and more gestural and stuff, they kind of take a lot more consideration and a lot more attempts and stuff. Mm. And I've done it before where I've like rolled out my ink because you're drawing blind, so yeah. you do it on the back of it and you spend ages doing all of this work that you think is amazing and you're like, oh my <laughs> God, I've nailed it, like this. And then you turn it over and I've put too much ink on and it's yeah. black. Um, so it's just something that I've kind of like gone between and different yeah. styles that I like and I like doing refined work and detailed stuff it's kind of the thing that I just go into a space and do something like that yeah. but then I guess it kind of just depends on what mood I'm in what whether I want to do yeah. monoprints or whether I want to do detailed stuff. detailed stuff and are there particular illustrators sort of from fashion history who you really admire whose work you love um obviously there's oh. like the greats and everything like that um but for me my real love is contemporary fashion illustration and obviously yeah. what I love is being able to work with people like this and kind of like do amazing things like this with people who are like contemporaries but obviously you've got to I mean Eric and Boucher and yeah, all those kind of people one, yeah. you've got to like appreciate and know where yeah. it came from but I mean now I love kind of contemporary, contemporary. stuff and doing. And why do you think contemporary illustration is thriving so much? Do you think it is is to do with sort of how um, digital things have become and that people love something that is ephemeral and tactile in nature. What is it that's kind of... I think, I think it's that. I think it, people love something that's hand done and it's that kind of immediate response and emotional response to something that I think you kind of... You see so much of, like, I don't know, so much kind of stuff that's everywhere and we're kind of yeah. oversaturated with things nowadays that to see something that's just someone's unique talent and yeah. that you couldn't do, like no one else could do, yeah. other than that one artist who does something so, so specific, specific and yeah. precise to them in their own style is kind of amazing. Yeah. And tell me, um, what I'm interested in is, is sometimes it feels like fashion that looks great in illustration is often not the same fashion that looks fantastic in photography. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed Nick is often shooting garments in a very different way to how the illustrators are depicting them. And to you, it, what, what kind of fashion makes for a great illustration? Is it about the clothes itself or is it kind of the stories behind the clothes? What is it about? I mean, it's got to be the clothes itself, I think, really. It's kind of like, but then you put it in a story, if that makes sense. Yeah. So obviously, like, the initial line is the kind of what, what draws me and the kind of shape and tone of everything and that initial line that gets you going into a piece. But I think a lot of illustrators, I personally don't, but a lot of illustrators put their works into a kind of setting or into some kind of story like yeah. that. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds like that, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank and you. happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Hi Richard, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Um, tell me a little bit about how you came to um, sort of be an illustrator and also tell me about some of the projects you've done because you've also worked quite collaboratively with other illustrators. So tell me a little bit about your traje trajectory. Um, I think kind of actually when I look back through education and school as well it was always kind of um, figures and clothes but I never really thought that it was fashion, yeah, yeah um, because I had no concept of fashion at all um, <laughs> like it was always just like video games or um, I don't know some crappy celebrity magazine or something <laughs> uh, like heat magazine like during Kylie when I was like 14 um, so I think when I started reading stuff like the face especially um, in its last few years, because yeah. it introduced me to people like Julie Verhoeven, Jasper Goodall, uh, Diane Shook, and a few digital illustrators as well. Um, and I, that was the first time I thought, actually, or at least I realised that it, there's actually a place for it in the industry. Yeah. As I kind of got to learn more about fashion as it went along as well. Yeah. I kind of went from there, really. And tell me, when you say a place for it in the, in in the industry, what specific outlets do you think illustration works really well in? Because I know you've worked with, with books and, and sort of online and magazines, yeah. or do you think it's kind of all of those? Um, I think it can be all in the right context or the right brief. I think a lot of people, like, you know, just cry out for the shame that it's not in editorial as much anymore. And I think the first few years is what I saw was in print and full page and you know, double page spreads. And I think after that, because I never saw it in any other magazines really as strongly as the face, I'm trying not to mention. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of, I think that was 10 years ago or well, 14. So. I think even now, just it's not really. I'm not particularly that upset. It's not in the magazines anymore. It would be great, yeah. but you know, if you ask about someone's work, the first port of call is Instagram. Yeah. It's their website. It's social media. Um, I feel like so many people produce work for their social media alone yeah, now, yeah. Um, and that's kind of where we're headed. I, I do love to see, see stuff in print, and that's yeah. why I said about other projects. Um, for me, it's always more treasurable to have a physical copy. Yeah. Personally. 
Yeah, and tell me about your specific style and how you go about sort of making a fashion illustration. Um, well, usually I'll go and but about 80% of the time I'll try and book a model, get the clothes in, photograph them. Um, I might do some live sketching, but it's just for my own enjoyment, really. Yeah. Um, I'm too kind of sometimes caught up in the final result piece. So, you know, I'll go through all my photographs, kind of see what works, change the posters within it as well, uh, work from them, take things out and build up the final image, really. Mm. So today is kind of quite a different process for me. So yeah. I think people will think, what's going to come of it and for me it's just two days to experiment really and to yeah. do what I used to do as well. Yeah and tell me this is kind of a, a, a mean question but how how what's your kind of success rate for an illustration how often will you discard the work and start again? Um, the good thing with my style is that I can actually take things back and uh, work into it more. Yeah. Um, sometimes when you work with immediate materials that's it if you've made the wrong mark then start again. Yeah. So today for example I'd say probably Maybe one in ten has been successful, yeah. <laughs> whereas at home it would be just like one in two or three. Yeah. So it's usually, yeah, if I can start when I make a work, I do the immediate stuff first because I know then I can work into the stuff that can be altered and changed. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned someone like, um, when you were talking about your inspiration, you mentioned someone like a Julie Verhoeven type character, and I'm interested in kind of how you see illustration because you very much define yourself as an illustrator, but to you, you know, someone like Julie has kind of crossed boundaries between sort of illustration and art yeah. and graphics, and, and do you think that? Would you not define yourself as an artist, or do you see illustration as quite separate to fine art? It's kind of it's, a, the, you know, it's the a good question, question because the yeah, there's very. I'd say Julie's definitely an artist. I mean, she works in so many mediums, and sometimes you, you know people go into an art gallery and go, "Oh, what is this? Is this art? Is this art?" And there's so many illustrators who have temperamental issues as to being called an illustrator or an artist, yeah. naming no names. <laughs> um, but I, when people ask me even and what I do, I always just say illustrator. I never really say fashion illustrator. Um, even though it's majoritively figure and clothing. Yeah. And to be honest, I always define fashion illustration as just within the context of fashion. Because there's some people who are just like, oh, but it's only a face, or oh, it's, uh, it's you can't really see the clothes that much. And I'm like, yeah, but context of it, yeah, the source from it, what well, the output is, or again, people like Julia or other people, um, I can't think of anyone apart, but who will draw things that you know might be related, but it won't just be figure clothing. clothing and yeah. I think I didn't study it as a degree but I think to go th for three years as a degree and be told it has to have a figure it has to have clothing which just drive you insane yeah so. and how do you start when you're making a picture do you start with the figure or do you start with the fashion or does it kind of vary because you talk about sort of figures and clothing yeah, yeah. kind of as being the principles behind your work but and what comes first when you're making the picture um it is very model centric because yeah. it is kind of I wouldn't really ever call myself a portrait artist but um I'd say that it, portrait is quite driven. I have to be inspired by the model in particular. Um, it's usually guys as well, and it's all girls today. So sometimes for me, it's, I'm usually driven by the angularity and shadows. Yeah. Um, and then, not that I'm not enjoying it, and they're amazing, <laughs> so amazing. But I think yeah, that usually comes first, and then yeah. I'll think of the clothes that suit them, what I can actually get access to, and go from there. Yeah. Really. And do you want to capture as well as the clothing? Is is it important to you to tell a story? Because a lot of photographers talk about making a story through their pictures. Yeah. I'm interested, is that something that you think illustrators do as well, and do you do that? I wouldn't say I do personally. I think I'm going to quote David Downton by saying it's kind <laughs> of like um, it's you're dealing in the industry of image. Um, yeah. I think mine are very pared back and very simple. Mm. So for me, it's just the kind of satisfaction of line, shape, really. Mm. I think, obviously, I am driven by certain faces, and it comes from that as well. Yeah. And it's just playing with those kind of negative elements and more detailed ones. and. I don't know, I think the story is just, I find them very beautiful to look at and I want beautiful images to do and look at, so. Thank you yeah. very much, All right. that was Thank fabulous. You. So tell me, um, Jen, tell me about your specific style because what's been interesting today, um, especially is watching, there's a lot of people drawing, a lot of people painting and you work in a very interesting way because you work with material and you work on a sewing machine as well as, well as sort of sketching in, um, in charcoal. Where did that style come from? My aunt introduced me to the sewing machine when I was a teenager and freestyle sewing and I've never looked back. Mm -hmm. Just I've always illustrated with a sewing machine and uh, when I did my degree in fashion I illustrated all my fashion pieces with the sewing machine. Mm. Then I got sidetracked after my degree and got into jewellery so yeah. 
you've been making jewellery, making a living as a jeweller. A jeweller, so, yeah. but it's kind of something you've kept going. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, though? Because when I watch you work with the charcoal, there's obviously there's a certain freedom and, and, and it's, you know, the mistakes can kind of become a part of the, the picture and there's yeah, that kind of spontaneity. That's a great thing about sort of like art and things. A mistake yeah. is never a mistake. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting... Point. But is that yeah. different when you're working on the machine? Because I imagine you have to be much more. No, no, no. no that's, 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 that's nice as well because it's sort of like you know you, you just sort of like yeah mistakes become something mm. an interesting point. And what is it that captures you? So you, when you have a, a sort of a model in front of you or a vision in front of you, is it you know the silhouettes? Is it because because the the work you do on the machine is mm. in a way relatively abstract? And I wonder is is it the colour? Is it the it's very, very individual to the piece and things, and it, you, you just pick up on different things. It could be the colour, but mainly it's it's the it's the cut, it's the it's the the way the fabric folds and mm. things, the way the, the way the fabric behaves and things. I respond to that. Mm -hmm. And do you think that do you think, I I see your style as very unique? But do you think that there are quite is is it more popular style than I maybe realise? Do you think that this idea um, of drawing through through sewing is something that I don't think many people do it the way I do it and things. Yeah. It's more rigid and things more sort of like, you know, pre programmed and you kinda of like you make a thing. I use it purely as a, a me you know, a medium to draw up like a pencil or a mm. piece of charcoal or a paint or whatever. But I don't see it as sewing as such, it's just it's just something a tool to use. Mm. So you still very much consider them illustrations, you wouldn't consider them because your final pieces, you know, it's a beautiful piece of fabric, so it it, it sort of straddles lots of different things, you know, is it? something that could become a garment is an artwork is an illustration so, but I, I mean in, when I did my degree and things I used to do a lot of um, embroidery on fabric and things and I did I did use that as a sort of like to design the the, the, the fabric um, but these no I they're pictures they're kind of wonderful because they're, they're hard to define yeah. that's what I quite like about yeah. them and I don't I mean I just respond to textiles and things so I don't yeah. I don't I don't necessarily think about what's going to happen to the mask or whatever. I just, you know, just into into creating them and things, and then stand back and yeah. leave it to whatever anyone wants to think about it. And what's your favourite sort of fashion to draw? Is there particular designers who you love? Do you love? You've done some amazing pieces that mm. I've seen that are just accessories. You know, just footwear. You know, are there sort of particular things that really? I guess I might respond to accessories because I've been an accessory designer for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say. So it's attention to detail. It's a little little points that I pick out so yeah. yeah no I mean no no one particular thing it's just just everything's up everything's up for grabs everything's really up for grabs. Yeah. thank you very much Jen. thank, thank you. you for being kind to me <laughs> so tell me are you enjoying your day so far and tell me what have been the challenges of drawing sort of in this kind of context with so many other illustrators around you with uh -huh. sort of you know not the most amount of time with the models always, yeah. um, amazing fashion. I think definitely it's intimidating. I think, first of all, the space is really nice, so that's intimidating. And being with these illustrators and um, basically the cream of the crop kind yeah. of people, it's really intimidating. So you kind of come in and you're like, all right, I gotta do my best. But you know, as an artist, when you put pressure on yourself, it just kind of crashes yeah, down. Yeah, crashes down. <laughs> so yeah, the biggest challenge this morning was just to get in the zone. Yeah. It's always, it takes me a while. It takes you a while. An hour That's two. interesting. Yeah. And tell me, how, what kind of illustrator would you define yourself as? Like, how would you describe your style? My style, um, it's kind of, it used to be quite dark. Yeah. But now it's getting a bit it's getting brighter. Getting <laughs> Yeah. Why do you I think, think that is? Cause, um, you know how you just go through emotions, I've like been yeah. depressed before, so it comes just out kind of depressed. Changed, yeah. Now I'm a bit happier. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's coming it out just, lighter. Yeah, I think the emotions I feel really translate into my work as yeah, well. Yeah. And, um, That's interesting because a, um, a lot of the other illustrators who I've spoken to, they talk very much about the work is very much informed by the model or the clothing, mm -hmm. but for you, do you feel like it's, it is very much a representation of, of you as well? Definitely, definitely. And I love life drawing because I feed off the model's energy as, as well. And is how I feel about her. Yeah. Like especially with the striking hair or the clothes. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's, I want to capture the emotion. Yeah. But it's mostly how I feel about things rather that's than the subject itself. Yeah. Yeah. So do you always like to feel like there's a sense of narrative in the work? Like someone could look at it and not just sort of be intrigued by the clothing, but but sort of project, you know, a story or a fantasy. Yeah, onto definitely. It. I'm I'm a big fan of narrative, and yeah. hopefully, um, for me, like the biggest challenge is to capture emotion and actually make it feel like if you look at the drawing I'm drawing hopefully you feel something yeah. and I think for all my work that's the main goal. And how do you balance that with also sort of making sure 
that you're capturing the fashion? How do you get that balance right? Um, I think for me, clothing itself is like a, a language, it's movement, mm. all the folds, and you know, I think you could tell a story based on just that. Just itself. that. Yeah. That's interesting. And, and tell me, how do you, what are your kind of hopes as an illustrator? Are there particular contexts that you enjoy working with, sort of whether it's for magazines or for social media? What, what kind of outlets would you love to pursue? Um, definitely, I think for me, life drawing is my uh, favorite, way of, favorite way of working. That's interesting. Um, because I, th I find if I work from magazine or by myself, I get a bit too like control freak. Yeah. The control freak in me comes on and I get really tight. Yeah. Whereas in I need the balance of life drawing to loosen me up a bit yeah, with sure. those quick, quick, quick drawings. So how long do you usually spend on a work or does it really, really vary? It varies, definitely. Yeah. But usually like a whole day for one illustration yeah. when yeah. I'm alone. But I guess with life drawing you have to force yourself to yeah. work quicker then, so that's yeah, one of yeah. the... And and what tips would you have for aspiring illustrators? Um, for me, I come from like a very traditional background where I learned anatomy and gesture, mm -hmm. and so that's really ingrained in me. Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell my students that um, if you want to build a, like a house, for example, yeah. you need a solid foundation to support yeah. your drawings. You can't just decorate the house and make it look nice. You have to you have, that. have that. Thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, aesthetic, like to hold structure. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. So a, b a big tip, I guess, is kind of setting those foundations, but also practice must yeah. be a huge thing. Yeah. And have you found your styles change quite a lot over time? Oh, Just, yeah. yeah, it's always constantly changing. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe I'm changing all the time, so <laughs> it has to change. It's obviously yeah. going to change, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. So the first thing I want to ask you about is colour, partly because of sort of your appearance, you're incredibly colourful yeah. in how you present yourself, but I think colour is a huge part of your work mm -hmm. as well, um, particularly responding to the colours in the garment. Would you say that is the case? Is that what drives you? Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hmm, it's hard mm. to talk about that. Um, it's funny because I really like black and white work. Yeah. And I was talking with someone else um, about um, I feel like you can get a lot of things done with black and white, yeah. but uh, color has a lot of emotions, I think. Yeah. And for example, um, if you look at sunset and then you get the mood of it and then you just um, take that and then put it to your work. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's interesting. So color for you, it is, it's about conveying a narrative or a fantasy or an emotion and, and yeah. enriching through that. That's yeah. interesting. I feel like um, color says a lot. So, for example, person who I think person who used a lot of red, for example, yeah. they're actually um, wanting attention, or uh, that's my take on it. Yeah. yeah. Or like blue, sort of um, says a lot about um, sadness. Or, yeah. 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 Okay. And how would you define your style as an illustrator? It's a really hard question. Yeah. Um, I really like experimenting. I find it um, confining for artists to be lock into one style, at least for me. Yeah. So, um, but some people would say like, oh, you have a style, mm -hmm. I can tell it to you, even though it's different kind of look. Um, but for me, concept comes first sometimes mm -hmm. um, when it comes to project. So uh, it's based on project and then, um, and then the style comes after that, mm, but mm. that's me. <laughs> yeah, and tell me, just give me sort of your route into illustration and how yep. you got to where you are. How did that all sort of happen? Yeah, uh, I I really liked doing fashion illustration since um, teenager time. Yeah, and somehow I got into design and doing industrial design mm. and. I really like that part, but it's very functional and practical, sure. whereas illustration and fine art has a lot to do more with emotions or concept or mm. ideas um, that are not particularly functional. Sure. So I like combining that combining into that, my yeah. work somehow. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And do you make yourself draw every day? Is that something that's important? Um, not really. No, how, how many times a week would you draw? I would say maybe three to five but mostly um, paintings nowadays yeah yeah so you you don't spend much time sketching it's very much always with the paint yeah yeah that's lately interesting. Yeah. I wondered if you did a lot of sort of preparation work in between but yeah no. sometimes yeah. Yeah. I'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> yeah. and tell me is there a particular fashion that you enjoy mm. that you enjoy sort of um, depicting are there particular designers who sort of capture your imagination I love com, a lot. com yeah. yeah what is it about com <sighs> 
like how anti everything she is. And yeah, she's just intelligent, and I like that. Yeah, um, and the pieces themselves kind of like an illustrator's dream as yeah, well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I also like um, photographers um, yeah. like Sarah Moon or. Paula Reversi. So do you look for, yeah. to photography for inspiration? Though? Sometimes I do, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I have my own Pinterest with yeah. <laughs> um, inspiring photos and uh, yeah. And I what will you use as references for paintings or just yeah. kind of as sort of like inspiration for sort of style and mood? Um, depends. Sometimes the gesture, sometimes the colour, uh, sometimes the feel of it. Yeah. So like I'm taking my own interpretation from what they are. And tell me, how do you start a work? Do you start with mood? Do you start with colour? Do you start with, you know, the form and the fashion? How do you... What's the first thing that sort of captures your imagination? Um. <laughs> Maybe it's a combination of everything. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. It's quite a lot. I do rough sketches a lot yeah. in the beginning, so it's not about... Um, the sketch is really bad or ugly. And, yeah. uh, for me, it's not important. The, the technical technicality at that time. So, but with the rough sketches, you get a lot of. Um, you can finalize the. You can visualize the final, basically. Yeah. From that. Yeah. And do you have any sort of um, sort of goals as an illustrator? There particular models you'd love to draw, particular yeah. garments, or anything like that. Um, this, is, this sounds big, but uh, my aim is to be proper artist. <laughs> Oh, tell me more about so you, would you like to be defined as an artist, not an illustrator? Um, both is fine, um, are fine. Um, I just want people to think more in their work. Um, so for me, starting to combine illustration with um, concept-based art or has a deeper meaning, mm. um, that's really important for me mm. or else I feel like it's just meaningless drawing. So a fine art day. rather than applied art then I guess is important to you this idea. Of, yeah. yeah or both or um, both. but sometimes I just want to draw as well. Yeah. Um, I guess for me it's just important to just question what we do. I know mm. it sounds really pretentious but no, it's not <laughs> at all. yeah for me yeah. it's just like what's the big goal of what's the big goal? life kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're doing a good job working it out today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.